Hi everyone, it's Friday the 17th of February, it's almost uh, quarter past three. Um, I am about to head to the gym uh, before spending five hours on a train heading back to Exmoor for the weekend and to catch up with my coach uh, Tim at Fitness Station in my head tomorrow, which I'm very much looking forward to. Um, a bit of a strange vlog, wasn't planning to do uh, a vlog today, but I was listening in on a conversation between two guys on one of my construction sites here in Cambridge. The two lads work for, one works for a scaffolding company and one works for uh, one of the brick name firms that we've got building a new sports hall for uh, an exclusive private school here in the centre of Cambridge. The conversation between them was in the, uh, in the staff canteen and uh, the young, both young, in their early 20s, late teens, early 20s. And the scaffolding guy and the scaffolding guy having a conversation about uh, bodybuilding and, and what their motivations were for uh, training. Neither are uh, competitive athletes. They've got no intentions, from what I can gather, of entering a, a physique or a fitness uh, competition. But they are uh, in good shape and they're obviously very passionate and caring about their physiques. And the conversation between them was very interesting and they were talking about how they were heading to the gym and packing on some muscle and wanting to look big and uh, one of them was prepping I think for a holiday in Ibiza in the summer um, and he wanted to make sure that he was ripped and the other guy was doing it because um, he wanted to pick up some, to use his terminology, uh, a decent looking chick at the weekend. But the way that they were chatting to each other was, um, I found quite eye-opening. Um, both of them were uh, reasonably good-looking guys and their physiques were uh, in pretty good shape. You know, they're, they're pretty good shape. Um, but both of them believed that they uh, were very weak-looking, very scrawny, very skinny, and they both wanted to become hench. And he found out recently, by the way, that uh, hench means um, buff and muscular, which must show my age. And it struck me as the, the thing that I took away from the conversation was that how we perceive ourselves is often very different from how others perceive us. And I'm guilty of that. I mean, I frequently uh, look in the mirror or take selfies and progress photographs and upload them to social media. And I'm never really satisfied with my aesthetic or my physique. I always want to be bigger, I want to have bigger biceps, quads, um, chest. You name it, I want it. And in talking to other fitness competitors and physique models, they're also always driven by the same aspiration to, to be bigger. And in fact, there's a natural progression in fitness competitions from sort of beach body categories through to fitness models, muscle model, and, and bodybuilding. But it doesn't have to be that way. Uh, and it got me thinking that we don't actually have to all want to be bigger. Um, these guys have got no reason to become bodybuilders. But they, they do think that's really, and, and in my view, they weren't. And I think that's the, the issue there, is, is that how we perceive ourselves is not necessarily the true reflection or, or, or the true image that we have or that we give across. And indeed, I was reading an article about the specific issues that relate to um, body dysmorphia in um, bodybuilders. And I think there's an association that it's just that women have um, self-image issues. But actually, in, in my experience, guys, young guys in particular, but guys of any age, have um, similar struggles with self-image and therefore self-worth. Um, I don't. I mean, I'm, I'm um, aspirationally I want to be bigger, but I don't. I don't feel depressed about the fact that I'm um, not particularly. Uh, muscular, well-defined at the moment. And for me, the criticism is about self-improvement and continuous development. I'm realistic that I've only been bodybuilding for over a year, so I'm never going to be the size of Tom Conway overnight. Um, I'm also you know, an athlete that um, believes in slow, steady progress, so I'm not about to take shortcuts in order to get bigger faster. Um, as, as, you know, if that's your choice, great, uh, but it's not mine. But it did strike me that actually there is a very fine line between criticising the way that we look and the way that we feel about ourselves and that risk of entering um, the unhealthy self-criticism which associates itself with body dysmorphia. Um, 
And it struck me really that the only real way of making sure that we don't bridge that or jump into that risky area of it becoming an unhealthy obsession is to talk about it. And it's to make sure that we, we discuss how we feel about ourselves with our friends and family and our coaches and our mentors and, and peers to make sure that the conversations always stay healthy. I'm constantly given feedback about how actually, well, look, look, at the, look at where you've come from and you should be incredibly proud of your journey and you've gone from a piece to wheelchair bound to um, very skinny and, and uh, um, very lightweight with no muscle kind of tool to um, you know, pretty, a guy in pretty decent shape that's uh, improving week by week, um, day by day almost. And that's, of course, correct, and that image is always at the back of my mind. Um, but I do look in the mirror and see someone that wants to be bigger, and I clearly don't see the same uh, image that others see of me. And, uh, and as I say, it got me thinking, and, it, and we, we do need to make sure that as we compete, which is difficult enough and stressful enough and exhausting enough as it is, that we don't allow that extra pressure and stress to cloud our judgment. So really, I just wanted to vlog to say, um, I was quite concerned about these two guys having a conversation earlier. And I, I didn't intervene, and I didn't say anything, but it got me thinking that these guys aren't actually prepping for comp. They don't have the same pressures that, that we put ourselves through. Um, but that there is that very fine line between uh, the drive for self-improvement and a very unhealthy obsession with image that creates a false image of exactly what we look like. And so really, I just wanted to have a very quick message to everyone to say um, if you look in the mirror and you're feeling like you um, you're, you don't deserve to be on stage then I would potentially argue that the, the self-image is, is, is not a healthy one um, and to talk about it with others to raise your concerns and, and to seek co constructive feedback from those you trust ignore the trolls and ignore those people on social media who give you unsolicited advice and comments they're, they're often just doing it because um, they've got their own I issues with self-worth and self-image and self-confidence. But uh, canvas for advice and feedback from those that you trust and respect. Um, and, and talk more and talk more openly. And I think then we can all continue to improve but in a very healthy and very positive way. Because for me, part of this journey is about creating that positive um, not inspirational because that would be too arrogant of me, but that very positive, I want to reinforce a very positive journey that actually transformative change can be a really good thing. Um, but to do that, we need to make sure that we have the right frame of mind whilst we're doing it. That's it really. Um, I hope that wasn't too confusing or um, unwarranted, but um, I just thought I'd um, express my view and uh, hopefully it will have a positive impact on, um, on, uh, on people. So on that note, I just drink my coffee, head to the gym, and uh, smash out another great session. Uh, look forward to speaking to you soon. Thanks, guys.